So here guys, as you can see this diagram, it is very simple, the use of a potentiometer, 10K resistor, a 220NF polyester capacitor preferably, a DB330V diac, its trigger voltage, and a triac, that I am using the BTA16, what you have to be smart is the potentiometer, as it is a potentiometer that has three terminals. You will have to join the three that go directly here on the line, let's say that here is phase and here is neutral, an example, let this be the phase, you will have to join the terminal like this, because if you join the terminal like this here, application application it will regulate in reverse, if you run it counterclockwise it will turn the lamp glow or the fan rotation, in this case, just examples, and if you put it in the right direction that it was supposed to increase, it will decrease, so I think it's particularly uglier, so you have to leave it that way here, but there's the but too, I was analyzing, mount ion spider circuit and get the conclusion in the following way, as you increase the resistance, this capacitor here it takes longer to charge and discharge, so what happens, oh yes location here, the triac it works by decreasing the output voltage, which is right. When you lower the resistance on the potentiometer, more current will pass here so it will charge and discharge the capacitors faster and then it will increase the voltage here on the triac, which at load will also increase the voltage and so you will have the right control, if you are going to use the potentiometer there, when you turn it to the right it increases the resistance. So the two terminals from left to right in the middle you will have to jam and connect as is here, understand? And on the other side you're already going to put a 10k resistor in series, and I'm going to come in this capacitor here, and between the 10k resistor and the capacitor, the DB3 is already here, okay? I'm not going to show the layout because I'm going to make it available for you to download just right, so I'm just showing you the layout, it's all for you to download in the video description, leave your likes, subscribe to my channel to give me strength for me to bring more videos like this for you guys. So here guys in this part here the DIAC it conducts alternating current in both directions, you can use two 1 and 4007 diodes to be able to do this service there instead of the DB3, but I don't advise because it loses a lot of sensitivity, so the DB3 is essential, it is there in place of the two diodes, but it works also because it conducts in both directions. So if you put the diode like this, cathode in the anode and cathode in the anode in the other will also play the same role, but not as efficient as the db3 okay so this one is very simple as you can see there let's go and i'll show you how the plaque was for us to sequel to the video so guys the sign was so cool here was the part of the tracks the tracks were one millimeter and ten it was great since i'm going to use it in my soldering iron then i'll reinforce it with tin the small plate was very small, the dimensions you saw on the computer screen are very few components and it will be a great dimmer there. So guys, this one is the 100k potentiometer, our first item in the material list, if you want to put a slightly larger 150k potentiometer it's even better because it increases the sensitivity, in my case I'm using the 100k one because for me will perfectly supply my condition for using the dimmer right. Our second component is the BTA16, it's a 16 amp triac for 600 V, if I'm not mistaken this one is for 800, this triac that will supply my need for the soldering iron too much, I'll still put a heatsink on it, I think I'm not even going to heat that much. Our next component is this 220 NF for 400 V capacitor, if you are going to use it on 220 I advise you to take it to 450 V, always good to take double the voltage you will use, in this case it is 127 and then this one will perfectly supply the break range of that capacitor. Use polyester capacitor, don't use ceramic, I'm also using this nub to be able to give a final finish to the potentiometer so that it doesn't stick directly to its metal. I'm going to use this aluminum heatsink removed from scrap. There's zero bullets, I know it's even too much for this project, but it stopped there and I'm using it, okay? And this other component here is the Diac DB30, it's the DB03, it's for 30V, you can use two diodes, also in parallel with each other, but it's not as sensitive as the Diac. This is the 10K resistor, brown, black and orange, I'm using it, it's one fourth of watts, if you want to use it with a little higher power, one eighth of watts is at your discretion, it's even better so I'm going to assemble the plate now so we can come back with the tests in practice and see how our dimmer looks okay, so let's go. Then guys coming back here, we already have our dimmer mounted, in perfect condition, this microwave fan is running there, 
and here is the voltage that is going to the multimeter that is going to the fan, so I will do some basic tests here with this fan and this lamp, with the soldering iron itself, I don't know if I'm going to do the test, because there's no way you can see the temperature, but if you see the lamp varying its brightness and the fan its rotation, you'll notice that the dimmer is in perfect condition. As I move the potentiometer to the correct direction you can see that the fan will change its rotation. I turned it a little, the voltage on it is already that. Ninety four V, the potentiometer is not one hundred percent yet, but it is already ninety four V. So the right way for the dimmer is to preferably be on the side that increases, for example, the image will appear there for you, you will increase the volume, it has to be to the right, not to the left, you have to take be careful with the potentiometer because if you put it upside down, here you'll make it run faster and the fan would decrease. So you have to pay attention to this detail in the potentiometer to be able to stay like this here, increasing the brightness or things to the right. So it's already at its maximum, the voltage going through the fan is 123V, 122V, it's at night now, the voltage is normal to drop a lot, it usually drops a lot here, if it was for this 127. So you can change your fan, a ceiling fan with triac of this 16 amperes AI, it's fine for a ceiling fan, so I'm going to do a test here with a lamp, remembering that it can't be with a LED lamp, it has to be an incandescent lamp or that halogen lamp if I'm not mistaken, and it has to be dimmed, I'll get one here for you to see. So guys I put a lamp here, it's 220V for 70 watts around, it's kinda off here because it's at minimum brightness, I took the multimeter off because it was discharging, beeping all the time, so as I increase the potentiometer the lamp goes increasing its brightness, and notice that it's in the right direction. Here it is at the maximum of the lamp. If it were a 500k potentiometer I think it would be possible to see the resistance very low. I will turn off the other light here and you will see the resistance of the lamp, as you can see, it's very low, you can reduce it even more, it should be about 20V and now it's gone, working perfect everything's there in the description for you to download, right? I believe it gives about 2000 watts, if you also reinforce the trails too. So that's it guys, I ask you to subscribe to the channel, that you leave your like to help the channel grow and engage more people and motivate me to bring more content like this to you okay guys, so I ask you to wait for the next projects. Thank you so much for those who watched so far, stay with God, big hug and see you in the next video.